This is Metastrophic Music. Welcome, campers. Thanks for tuning in once again to Metastrophic Music. We are back with another hard mode episode. Little different version from our standard show. We each choose a band and present to the other person. Take a listen down through the tracks and we get on here and we talk about it and tell you exactly how we felt and what we think. Kelly. Here we are in hard mode. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> All right. So I guess we'll just jump right into this because it is a, a different feel, a different vibe from classic. Yeah. Before we start, I just want to say, this is our second hard mode. I felt like I wasn't sure how to start today before we... Uh, I know. Before we exchanged songs on the first hard mode, I started with, I like had my energy drink and I was like, yeah, I'll do this. It's like a new day. It's Saturday. It's yeah. weekend. But then today, man, I'm not sure how to do this. <laughs> I had some kombucha. Perfect. I got some uh, ginger lemongrass tea and a cup of coffee. I'm kind of mixing and matching here. Nice. I drink a lot of black coffee. Like, I won't add any like, uh-huh. cream or sugar to it. But I don't really love the flavor of coffee. Yeah. You have to acquire a taste for stuff that tastes awful yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in a twisted way i want like the best of the awful i like my coffee cold not like iced coffee or cold brew i like to <laughs> let my coffee sit for a half hour and then i drink it when it's like this acidic sludge wow it almost tastes like green peppers it had been sitting around for like, <laughs> it gave me like the weirdness like what is going on right now wow yeah Let's talk some music, man. Today, uh, Duffy experienced failure. Yeah, brand new to me. In my opinion, the most underrated band from the modern rock alternative mid-90s. Okay, that's funny. That's funny. I wrote down a note that I thought this was either late 90s or early 2000s. Yeah, they actually started in 1990. Ken Andrews, Greg Edwards, and Kelly Scott. I only recently discovered them like two or three years ago. When I saw the name, I was like, Failure. I was like, oh, I know Failure. <laughs> Let's click yeah. on this band and see what they sound like. Sci-fi, space core. I fell in love with this band on first listen. The album, Fantastic Planet. It has to be the most underrated to come out from that era. Yeah. So many bands were influenced by them, especially... uh tool okay because they opened a lot of shows for them maynard in a perfect circle they actually covered a failure song the nurse who loved me and it's off a of fantastic planet so when i heard it i was like what i know this song how did this band fly under my radar for so many years i wanted almost to just to pick four songs from fantastic planet because that album start to finish is just awesome there's even a song that i'd left off that was it's called saturday savior how do I not include this? We're recording on Saturday. I really wanted to give you a diverse presentation of their music from their whole career. I feel like I've heard the band's name somewhere before. I was thinking like late 90s, early 2000s. It definitely has that sound. Is this a three-piece band? Do you know? Yeah. Okay. Ken, Greg, and Kelly are the original three. Yeah. Yeah. They totally have the sound of a three-piece band and the way that it's mixed where, and I really like this, how the bass guitar and the guitar completely stand out from each other. You know, there's no, like, it's not blended together. Yeah. It's not like with a lot of bands where, like, the guitar and the bass are playing the same riff and grooving together. And I like that. I like when a three-piece band is mixed that way, when they craft their music that way so that, you know, you can pick each piece out. I'm a fan of this band, man. Oh, that's good. Kelly. (laughs) Do you want to go through my stack? Yeah. Number one, I chose Hot Traveler. Mm Mm-hmm. One of their newer songs. It's really catchy. Yeah. It pulls you in this ambiance around the song like the soundscape i guess i'm constantly hearing new and different things while i'm listening to it adds to the experience of the song almost like a robotic android sort of you know isaac asimov feel to it 
Yeah, I think the mix of this band is very easy on the ears. Pleasant, it's easy to listen to. You know, I listen to it here at home, but it's something that I can easily see myself just putting on in the car. It can be front and center or it can play in the background and, you know, sit comfortably either way. Yeah, Hot Traveler was probably, I think it was probably my favorite song yes, on the stack. Yes, I knew it. And you know, because I debated on where to put it in my stack. Had this one, I could go with either one or three. I went back and forth because I was like, this one's really good to get you in the door to these guys. This one or number two, one of those is my favorite. Atomic City Queen, because it has that kind of... No, you go ahead. What, what did you think of that? A little bit like I was just saying about, you know, riding around in the car listening. This sounds like something that I could, like, face out to, like, in a good way. That heady space i've said it before on a couple of our episodes you know almost gives you like a feeling of you know did i just take a hit off a bowl or something <laughs> yeah, right right that kind of feeling the number two i use they call it the experimental slot maybe take a little more chance a little more risky you know you're already in the door now so to speak on the f stack it's not too dissimilar from hot traveler like we really haven't ventured off into some of the different sounds each track is unique in a sense so I've only heard these four songs by failure. The vocals are very pleasant on all of these songs. I kind of get a little bit of early, like, Mashing Pumpkins vibe. Oh, yeah. Are we going to say some shoegazy here a little bit, maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. Less noisy yes. than the Smashing Pumpkins, you know? Yeah. Sits well, maybe, with that band in my mind. I want to go back to Hot Traveler just for one more thing. Okay. Towards the end of the song, it does this thing where it sounds like the song is about to be over, but then it kicks back in, and I thought that was a neat little surprise. Yeah. Actually, I'm glad you went back, because I wanted to mention like the lyrics. I re really enjoy the way the song is kind of structured. You're kind of traveling with this protagonist through the song. The pleading sound of stay up late with me, stay up until the softness fades and we're not afraid. I really like that. Yeah. One of my favorite lines in their whole catalog is, a thousand ways to lose your purpose, a thousand more to make it worth it. They're kind of a complete package, in my opinion. Musics, lyrics, vocals, presence, atmosphere. Yeah. Adam City Queen. Yeah, the lyrics. I liked the lyric, one more paralyzed dream. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good song. Hot Traveler and Adam City Queen are are definitely my favorites on this stack. Number three, Smoking Umbrellas. Yes. I liked it. I really like the verses. When it gets to the chorus, the chorus was kind of like a shift in the sound. I mean, which you expect a chorus to be different from your verses. At first, I didn't like the way it shifted the tone, I guess, musically. I had to like let it work on me okay. a little bit. Towards the end, I was like, okay. The verses I just felt were so, the sound musically and everything, just like really, really good with this song. This is the unpredictability of music, man. I'm just appreciating in the moment. <laughs> this was supposed to be the sure thing slot. You, just, you never know the, what another listener is going to get from it. Yeah. The fact that it switches up, you know, the fireman calls out. Yeah, we got another smoking umbrella. <laughs> I love the story of this song, this defeated protagonist just doesn't want to get out of bed even though like everything's burning around him yeah in that era this should have been on the radio the radio station out of rochester new york called the nerve 95.1 95.5 yeah i remember that they used to call in and request song this immediately was when i first heard this i would have requested this definitely would have wanted to hear this more that's funny that you say that because something that came to me is that this band Failure sounds like a band that we would have seen probably like at a radio station festival Yeah, back in the day. You know, it, it totally has that sound of that radio station festival, big summer banger. They would have been one of those 10 bands for 10 bucks or whatever, you know? Yeah. This is surprising to me that they didn't catch fire at some point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They charted their own path, and I definitely appreciate that. And they stay together, and they're still making great music. This song, the way that it sets its tone of like 
I don't want to leave the comfort of my bed. The doorknob was glowing. All my photographs were rippled and melting. Through the walls, I could hear panicked voices. They seemed to say, go back to bed. There's no choices. And nowhere not burned out. I don't know. There's something really haunting and like, I want to say almost gothic. It sounds haunting when you read it. <laughs> yeah, I guess if we read it like that. Not in the song, obviously. The song has the, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's close out with my uh, my sledgehammer is uh, Paralytic Flow. How did you feel about this track? This was my least favorite track. Oh, okay. On the stat. And it may have had something to do just with the way that I'm feeling in the moment when I listen to it. The song, it kind of seemed to like go on too long for me. I was starting to feel like tired and almost like my mind was like trailing off. <laughs> so now you got me over here going, crap, I could have added frogs or submission and my brain's like listening <laughs> off all these songs. And you know, this one, I mean, I like this song. I really had a tough time escaping my formula. And it's like, I need that epic feel to close it. It's a growing process for me. Well, yeah. The earlier song was a little more hard punching kind of music, you know? I would have liked to hear another track like that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like fighting with myself as I'm making this. You know, growing pains here. The listener is going to go along with us on this journey as we figure this stuff out musically with each other. Yeah, I mean, with these hard modes, we're trying to, at least what I'm picking up from you and I, I'm doing the same thing. We're kind of trying to make like a story experience. The ups and downs like a ride so i get it this is good for the future how to build specifically for your listening experience in mind parallel flow makes a lot of sense for me and my listening experience most of us are building when we build playlists build them for ourselves it's not like the mm -hmm. old days when we used to sit down and record songs to cassette tapes to give to people the whole concept of a mixtape we're kind of doing that in a way. We're trying to help the other person discover our new joy. In a way, it does leave me wanting to get on YouTube and look up some failure because it's like, I can't go out on that note, you know? <laughs> I like the line, I'm a radiator, I'm an empty shelf. What did you discover on the way to me? That little haunting like line that goes through it. I'm not saying Paralytic Flow was a bad song, it's just it wasn't the energy that I was looking for after the first few tracks. Yeah, it's good to know now. Didn't quite stick the landing. Overall, to sum it up, great pick. I like that you introduced me to this band today. I'll definitely listen more because I'm sure there's some gems that I can find once I go digging. Frogs. You know, frogs. <laughs> frogs. And Submission, too. That's their first song off their first album, 1990. And it all, all works out, you know, in its own magical way. Yeah, man. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let's talk about your band this week. Yeah, so for you this week, I chose the band Alkaline Trio which is, I guess, like pop punk, maybe. I think they're a little less pop and maybe even a little less punk. Maybe like a watered-down punk, you could say. I've loved this band for years and years. They're from Chicago. They formed in the 90s, but since 2001, they've had the same lineup, which is Matt Skiba on guitar and vocals, Dan Andriano on bass and vocals, and Derek Grant on drums. So yeah, they're around since the 90s. I think they have like eight records, if I remember right. Eight, nine records. Yeah, I've, I've seen this band live. Oh, I don't know if it was you and I that were talking about this. No, it wasn't. It was, um, <laughs> I just went to that concert with our mutual friend there. Him and I were talking about sometimes when you hear a band on cd you know you're familiar with them you have a certain idea of what to expect you go to see them live and they come out on stage and they're just like way heavier than you were expecting that's this band you listen to this band oh on you know the recordings it doesn't scream like you know circle pit <laughs> you know like no, no. slam <laughs> dance dude when i saw this band live it was wow amps must have been up to 11 no the energy was just super high freaking moving definitely like doing a little bit of the slam dance slamming into each other it was a different experience it was pretty awesome so that helped 
Oh, I like that. That left that impression in my mind just solidified the fact that, you know, this band is awesome in my mind. You know, that's why I chose this band for you. I had a feeling that it kind of sat within that musical range. You know, good melodies, up-tempo, not too heavy, but, you know, still very rocking. I don't know if it's a fair association, but Green Day is kind of the center tent pole of that sound. Yeah. Grew up a huge Green Day fan. How does it fit in that atmosphere? And it just took me right back to listening to that sound. Now, I had some familiarity with the band beforehand. There's the stigma of past association, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to get yourself out of that head trip, especially what we're doing here, you know, sitting down and listening to a band. I don't really want to try to have it in the present moment and your experience be defined by that. You're listening now and reading the lyrics and experiencing the music new. It took me like a full song to get to that place, but once I got there, I was like, this is in that area. I don't like it enough that I'm like, I'm going to go out and fill up my playlist with this sound or this band in particular, uh -huh. but... You definitely chose songs that are distinct between each of the four within there. Like, they make yeah. their little marks in a particular way. The first song I chose for you, Help Me, the vocals really stand out in this song. The mm -hmm. melody, the chorus, the tone of the song feels very pleasant, and the tone of the music feels uplifting. I gravitate towards that. What do you think of this song? I thought it was catchy. I like the tempo, like you said. I definitely appreciate songs that have kind of inverse relationship with each other, where the lyrics, in this case, are a little bit not as sweet. They don't match the tone, yeah. Yeah, like it doesn't match it. It's a push and pull kind of thing going on with you when you're listening to it. You're leaning into that happy place, but then you're reading the lyric. Well, this isn't a thing. <laughs> yeah. The song's called Help Me. <laughs> this band does that a lot, too. A couple points where I was just like, whoa, this is, <laughs> this is pretty dark. Yeah. And I appreciate that as a horror author and lover of things horror. It tricks your brain a little bit. So with this band, you have Matt Skiba and Dan Andriano on vocals. There isn't one clear lead singer for the band. They kind of split it pretty evenly. This song, Help Me, was a good introduction to Matt vocals. I think they really shine pretty well on this track. Now, on every album, they both sing a share of them, or is yes. this a different... Yeah, they both sing... Uh, it's just a alternating kind of thing. Yeah, it's just back and forth between songs, and they um, they both do harmonies and backups when the other one's taking the lead. Oh, that's cool. And, and they both have a distinctly different voice from each other. Yeah, number two, I chose We've Had Enough. This may be the first song I ever heard from this band. Really? Yeah, probably in like 2001, maybe. 22 years ago today. It's a powerful riff. I really just instantly was like, the energy, the riff. Yeah. I had to learn how to play it myself. Just that high energy sound. And this track just feels like it has more power in the mix than a lot of their other stuff does. Yeah, I, I thought that you would right away hear that opening and it would kind of yeah. pump you up a little bit. Yeah, I thought the lyrics too, that you would, you'd like it. I would say that this was my favorite on your stack. Yeah, immediately grabbed me and it put myself in a really nice centered place to just appreciate the music. I wrote down the lyric, I found another way to get even with my memory. Yeah. Perfect. That was a great choice, man. Yeah. I, I definitely like this song. It's even better knowing that like this was your first experience with Alkaline Trio. Yeah, it sucked me right in. Track number three, I chose Radio. So, <laughs> right off the bat, the lyrics, man, what'd you think? So I wrote down horror rock. Yeah. It's not like I think of it as an actual genre. Not like your typical Halloween playlist, you know, that you make in October. Those spooky songs or whatever. To me, like, horror rock is the presence of horror within whatever the song is. This one was the lyrics for sure. I'm reading this and I'm like, whoa, this person is not dealing with this breakup very well. <laughs> yeah, there's so many good lines in this song. Yeah! I'm smoking the brains from my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's so dark, but it's got this sweet coating of music around yeah. it. The subversive nature of horror and that you can slip in things there that you can't otherwise do. 
I like the song and the, and that little guitar lick in the beginning. Yeah, like, I really like that melody. The musically, the sound there. That's kind of why I stuck it at number three. A couple songs that just start out rocking, and then uh, this song starts out that ding 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 ding. You know, like the single note. Yeah, I thought it was like a nice little dip. Great lyrics. The uh, imagery play the movie in your head for everything that he's saying. Yep. I really like the line, if Columbus was wrong, I'd drive straight off the edge. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys get dark, but they keep it fun. <laughs> Those first three tracks were lead singer Matt Skiba, and track four I picked Little Help, which is sung by Dan Andriano, the bass player. A fun little sing-along sort of like a bar song yeah it good campfire sing-along actually it was that's what i wrote down oh this fits the atmosphere of what we're doing you know yeah i could see pulling out our acoustic guitars and just jamming out to this and singing along and yeah exactly this is a good way to finish out this f stack i really appreciated how different our approaches are at building them mm -hmm. it feels like a good finish this was definitely a fun experience glad you chose them yeah cool uh, I'm glad, man. I tried to pick some songs that I thought were easy to latch on to. I love just about everything they do, but they have songs that are more for people who are already into them, like already fans. Yeah. I felt like these were songs that uh, like a first-time listener might be able to latch on to, so I'm glad to hear that you liked it. Yeah, for sure, dude. Cool. Close it out, Kelly, with Song of the Week. You want me to go? You go first. Okay. Yeah, I went first with the band, so. All right, cool. Well, my song of the week is by Blink-182. Have you ever heard of that band? I have not. <laughs> this is the <laughs> first time. I just wrote them down. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna be checking them out. Oh, yeah. What's the song by this band you would like me to check out? So the song is Bored to Death. And it's off from the record California, which was their seventh record. It came out in 2016. So what's cool about this track and this record is that Matt Skiba from Alkaline Trio sings this song because he was a member of Blink-182 for this entire record. Yeah, so he did this record, California, with the other members of Blink-182, and he did... Nine, I believe, is the, the name of the record after this. It's just the two records that he did with them. And, you know, I'm a big fan. Obviously, I gave you Alkaline Trio today. But I'm a big fan of Matt Skiba. And him with Mark Hoppus and Blink-182, I think it's, it's awesome. Like, I wish that <laughs> Tom DeLonge never came back to the band. <laughs> oh, he said it. He said it. Oh, he walked up to the line and, and he crossed it. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's back now. He, Tom DeLonge is back. I love Blink-182. I have since, you know, I was 14, 15, whatever it was. And I don't want to negate anything that Tom DeLonge did with the band, because I love him too. But I just think that Matt Skiba with Blink is awesome and amazing. I, I, lo I really love it so much. I knew that he was in the band, but I just recently discovered for myself, I dove into these records and actually listened. California and Nine, they're both really, really good. And I picked Bored to Death, which was actually released as a single. It was their first single with him in the band. And it's just a great tune, man. Check it out. Please check out some other stuff that he did with them, too. <laughs> so I'm glad that you chose that song because it ties in with your F-Stack this week. Because uh -huh. mine also ties in in that I chose Kicks and Leeches by Tool. Oh, okay. In that failure being an opening band for them. So I chose Ticks and Leeches because I was listening to Failure this week. I decided, oh, you know, I'll go back and listen to some Tool. Are you familiar with the song? No, never heard of it. Not a big Tool person. I know their radio songs, and that's it. Okay, this is a little bit more of a deeper track. Ticks and Leeches, man. Kind of says it all. I don't really want to, like... <laughs> <laughs> this is the song that I've been listening to the most. Yeah, that's cool. Is this one of those Tool songs that's, like, eight minutes long? Yes. <laughs> it is. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All right. So then tune in next week. All right. All right, man. Yeah, it's been good. Goodbye, I guess. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Later.
Thank you.